let me show you how to go from raw footage to rough cut faster than the flash. This video is perfect for if you're brand new to video editing, or even if you've been video editing for a while and you wanna pick up some tips and tricks to see how a professional does it so you can make your video editing more efficient. The video editing app I'm gonna show you is called DaVinci Resolve. I absolutely recommend it because it's free, stable, and works amazingly. Let's get our footage into the video editing app. I'm in the media tab. Open up the folder where your files are. In my case, I have a video file and an audio file. Grab them, drag them over to the media tab. There may be a pop-up saying if you wanna change the frame rate. If you do, click yes. We got the two clips down here. The first thing we wanna do is sync the audio data. Select the video clip on the audio clip, right click, go down to auto sync audio and click based on waveform. That way it syncs it up with the audio waveform. You don't have to do it in the editing page, sync it together and delete the other audio files. Saves a little bit of time. Once that's done, let's go over to the edit page. On the edit page, since we synced up the audio, we can drag the clip right down to the timeline. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna adjust this audio video bar here. I bring it up all the way to the top because if you have it down lower here, when you're scrubbing through footage, you have to go back down here, do a cut clip, go back up here, grab it. Moving it up here makes it quicker to go from cutting clips to going back to the playhead, especially when you're doing the first rough cut. As you can see, my audio track is a little bit bigger than usual, and I highly recommend making it as big as possible. And also you can see here that my viewer mode is in single viewer mode. Maybe when you first open up Resolve, you'll have the dual view mode. For rough cuts, I like to just have the single viewer mode. In order to do that, go up to workspace and then check mark this single viewer mode. Clips in the timeline, everything's set up at the beginning. You can start doing your rough cut. But if you need to adjust the colors in your video, I highly recommend doing that first. And this is the best setup to do it. Delete the clip off of the timeline, go up to it in the media pool, right click on it and click create new multi clam clip using selected clips. Since you already synced the audio, you don't have to adjust any of these, just click create. Drag this multi clam clip down into your timeline and then right click on it in the media pool and click open in timeline. Now there's this little button here, click it, timeline view options, click this one, stack to timeline. So then you'll have some tabs here and then you can double click on timeline one to open it, adjust it to how you need. Now we have a multi-cam clip. The reason why I do a multi-cam clip, even if we don't have a multi-cam, is because you can color grade and adjust the video settings at any time. Even if you cut the original clips on the timeline, it won't affect anything. You can go back to it later on. So let's say you color grade and adjust things to make it too bright or too dark. And by the end of the edit, you realize, hey, it's a little too bright or too dark. You can go into the multi-cam clip and just change that clip out. It's way faster and easier. So we're in the multi-cam clip timeline. I'm gonna click over here into the color page on DaVinci Resolve. And I have some base settings. I know how this camera works. I know what looks good for it. I'm just gonna boost the shadows here by 20. I'm gonna reduce the highlights by negative 10. And I boost up the saturation by 55. And then the footage looks a little bit dark. So I'm gonna brighten it here. Ideally, you wanna go through the footage and find a spot where the exposure is gonna be consistent throughout. This camera, all the settings are manual and my lights are set up manually, so I know that it's gonna stay consistently throughout. So I adjusted those settings and as you can see, it looks great throughout the whole clip, but you can also use the waveforms on the bottom right here to adjust it, make sure everything looks good. What you're looking for is the skin tones to be around 640 to 768. So over here, it was just a little bit too dark. This is showing a representation of the videos. So if I click play here, you can see this moving around. This is my face area here. It's a little bit too low. So what I'm doing is I'm moving it up so that it's touching the 640 area. You can use the waveforms and it's super helpful, but also trust your eyes. The waveforms help out because every monitor is different. So it gives you a scientific reading and helps you adjust things correctly but also trust your eyes, look at the viewer. Let's say we put it up too high and then we're looking at it, it's like, all right, that just looks too high even though the skin tone is in the 640 to 768 range. It's a combination of the two, your artistry and scientific readings. So I know that it looks good right here. Let's head back over to the edit page. And right now we're in the multicam clip timeline. Let's click on timeline one and let's start our edit. The reason why I enlarge the audio is because it saves a lot of time editing by looking at the audio waveforms. Instead of just watching the footage, waiting to see if there's a mistake or if there's a break, you can just look at the audio clip and I can go from here to here. Boom, just cut that out way faster. Most video editors do it like this. We have our color set up. We have our timeline set up. Before you start editing, I always make proxy files. We're gonna go into the original clips folder. We're gonna right click on the file and then we're gonna click generate proxy media and it's gonna be generating. 
Now, it takes a little bit of time depending on your CPU, how powerful it is, but creating proxies at the beginning and waiting for it to finish is going to save you hours in the video editing timeline. I made a whole video about the power of proxies. You can video edit with computers that are so much older. If you just proxy the files, it makes the timeline buttery smooth and it allows you to go full speed when video editing. Always proxy the files. I always do it. I always highly recommend that you do it. It's not even going to take that long. So this file is 10 gigs. It's only going to take two minutes to proxy the file. Let's just wait it out. Proxy is done. I'm going to go back to the master clips area and the media pool. And now we can start our edit. So I'm going to click down into the timeline. We're going to see our video right there. This is the power of the waveforms. So at the beginning of the video, it's usually me just syncing up the audio or just talking to the camera. I can skip straight ahead to the beginning part of it because I can see that the waveform, there's nothing interesting going on there. And then again with the waveforms, I can see here, I redo the same thing over and over because the waveforms look the same. That speeds up your video editing. So edit via waveforms. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm gonna make a cut over here and I set up my keyboard shortcuts to be like an FPS shooter. It's all around WASD on the left side of the keyboard. And when I'm editing, I try not to lift my hand off of the left side of my keyboard as much as possible because every time I have to move my left hand off, that's gonna take a little bit extra time. It's about efficiency. I'm gonna hit W right here. It's gonna make a cut to the left. And since this is the beginning of the video, I'm gonna put my first marker. The marker is gonna be on the timeline. I'm gonna hit F1. I set that keyboard shortcut to put blue markers, which is my YouTube chapter markers. So I'm gonna double click this marker here and I usually call it start or intro. Keep organized as much as possible. It's gonna help out in the long run when you finish an edit and you need to go back and do an adjustment later. Or if you need to open up the project in two, three months, everything is labeled, everything is easy to read and easy to see. So I made the cut to the left and now I'm gonna listen in on what I'm saying. I love, <clears throat> all right, I made a mistake there. I can go ahead and cut that. I love video editing. That's a good take. So I'm gonna make a little edit there. That's my keyboard shortcut A, it just makes it cut. I, I love video editing. I love video editing. So even this take is good and this take is good. What I notice from working with clients is usually the last take is the one that they wanna keep. Sometimes they will make a perfect take and then they would just wanna redo it so they have a second option. But a lot of times clients are pressed for time. They just wanna get the things that they're saying correct. You can look at the waveforms and see, oh, it's towards the end. Just grab that one on the right. So I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna cut this one. I'm gonna click that, delete it. That's my cue shortcut and then move it here, this is the start of my video. So then we go in here into the cut, this is my first cut, this is the clip that I wanna keep, and then I listen in on what this is gonna be. One keyboard shortcut I use all the time is pressing F. F goes into 1.5 times speed. 95% of the time, I am watching the video at 1.5 times speed, it saves time, and I've gotten used to it where I can listen to stuff at 1.5 times speed, and I retain and understand the information. So I highly recommend you do the same thing. But then when I go in to do the edits, I slow it down and I watch at regular speed to make sure I get those cuts perfect. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do 1.5 speed. I made a mistake, I'm gonna make a cut there. The juice is flowing, it allows me to have a wonderful life and it helps people out. What's up everybody on Yusuf AH, the video editing? What's up everyone on video edit? What's up everybody? I am Yusuf AH, the video editing artist. I wanna help video editors realize how- Okay, that's nice, but then I have a little break here. So I'm gonna go in and make a little bit of cut all down to style. Sometimes you wanna leave the breath in, sometimes you don't. I'm gonna take off the snapping here so I can move my playhead very easily over here. And as you can see, because I moved my video clip up really high, I have very little distance to travel from clicking on clips and going to the playhead. Saves time. <laughs> all right, it looks like that I just redid the entire intro because maybe I wasn't happy with that. So I just go through, click all of these and delete it and press Q to delete it all, bring this all the way to the intro. I to love video editing. I wanna gush about it, tell you why it's so awesome and just share with you my thoughts on the career of video editing. All right, this is great. I'm, I make it, you can make a choice, leave the breath in or take the breath out. I'm gonna take that breath out and that's the end of the line here. So I'm gonna make a cut right there. When I wanna put in some text overlays or put some B-roll, I'm gonna mark it right now. And I'm gonna mark those on the clips. And the reason why I mark it on the clips rather than timeline is because when you're cutting and editing a bunch of stuff and it moves around, it messes with the markers on the timeline. I just use that for YouTube chapters. So here I wanna have a little text overlay that's gonna pop up and say the title of the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and press F3. That's gonna be on the clip. F3 is gonna make a purple marker. Let's me know I'm gonna put a text overlay here. And I'm not gonna go in and label it because I'm gonna 
Once I put the title effect onto there, I'm gonna label and write out whatever it is. So just having the marker there is perfect. I'll tell you why it's so awesome and just share with you my thoughts on the career of video editing. What's up? We can go to regular speed, see how those cuts feel. You, my thoughts on the career of video editing. What's up everybody? It's pretty good. Usually at the end of sentences or the end of a long sentence, I don't cut it right on the word. So I'm disabling snapping right now. I don't cut it super close. I leave a little bit of breath. And that all depends on the client too. Sometimes I want a longer breath. Sometimes I want a shorter breath. So. We can see how that feels. Career of video editing. What's up everybody? I feel that's a little bit long for my style and my videos, but it may feel perfect for your videos. So I'm just gonna cut that a little bit. I'm using the keyboard shortcut E right there to cut to the right. Very nice, I got that clean. Make a edit cut right there and then cut to the left. I'm gonna help video editors realize how amazing they are so they can see themselves in artists. I want help there, so I'm gonna go over here, cut. I wanna help video editors realize how essentially amazing they are. Make them so, make, make them realize that they're artists so very nice. I just paused right there and then cut. Make them realize that they're artists so they can get paid more and have a better life doing this amazing profession. All right, cool. That's a good line right there. And then let's find the next one. Video editing because it is, I love video editing because it's so fun. I grew up playing video. That was a fun one. Okay, so delete that right there. Cut here, cut there. And then this is going to be a YouTube chapter marker. So I'm going to hit F1. And this is going to be the why video editing is like video games. Now, of course, you can adjust this and change this whatever later on in the future, but it's just for organization purposes. And then you continue going through and doing the rough cut. This is exactly what I do. So zoom in, make those cuts, check the things, proxy your files, 1.5, speed it to go through faster, make your cuts, set the markers. You do the whole thing for the video. And once all that is done, you have your rough cut and you're ready to go. That's the full setup for a rough cut and the first pass, which is actually doing the rough cut editing. Your second run through the video is gonna be putting the titles, checking the cuts again, adding effects, adding zoom-ins, adding punch-ins, adding SFX, sound design. And once that second run through of the video is done, that's when you do the third run through, which is kind of like a final check and final sprinkles of what you want to add into the video. Putting the B-roll down and talking about B-roll, if you have B-roll from a client, what I do is I put a marker for F2, which is a green marker, which lets me know, okay, I got to put a B-roll clip here. Before I start editing, I actually watch all of the B-roll clips so I know what I'm working with. So then when I see the person talking about a certain thing, I'm like, oh yeah, there is a B-roll clip of that one thing. So that's when I put a marker down or I put a marker down when I feel like there should be something on screen happening either a b-roll clip or maybe it cuts to a gif or a funny meme or something like that that's all happening with this first rough cut so by the end of the rough cut you're going to have markers for chapters you're going to have markers for titles you're going to have markers for b-roll or on-screen memes or on-screen sfx or anything that you need to do so that when you go into the second phase the second run of doing the video editing you already know where all that stuff is going to go and it saves you a bunch of time this is exactly how i do every single video edit i start with the rough cut setup proxying the files setting up the multi-cam going through making the rough cuts and putting the markers that's what i do to make a fast edit happen every single time and that's how you make your rough cuts happen fast. What do you think about my techniques? Do you have any improvements for me? Do you do it a different way? Do you have a different style? Go ahead and sound off in the comments. I wanna hear what you do to make sure your video edits happen as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for watching.